it's a, a weeble wobble. It's a wobbly stool. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today, I am making a Tipperary cocktail. They're quite good. This is an Irish whiskey-based cocktail, which you don't see a whole lot of, but it's perfect for St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up. I intended to do this last year, this time of year, but instead I decided to do my own original cocktail, the Lucky Stone. Check it out. But today we're doing the Tipperary, classic drink, a joy. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes. And let's go make the Tipperary cocktail to the bar. It's a long way to Tipperary. That was the name of a song, but it actually is a long way to Tipperary from Chicago. I've never been there. Tipperary is a town in Ireland. It's also the name of a county in Ireland. And Tipperary the town is inside of Tipperary the county inside of Ireland. But this cocktail actually was not created in Tipperary or in Ireland at all. It was created in New York City by Hugo Enselin in 1916. And the story goes, Hugo is working at his bar and this gentleman waltzes in and he's humming the song, It's a Long Way to Tipperary, which was known to be an anthem to Irish soldiers during the First World War. At this time, the First World War was actually happening, if this story is even true at all. But he came up to the bar and he said, I would like a cocktail. So Hugo made up on the spot the Tipperary cocktail, which was Irish whiskey based because he recognized the song, Sweet Vermouth and Green Chartreuse. Now, for those of you who know, this is a similar drink to the Bijou cocktail, a drink I haven't done on this channel, not yet, but he made this drink for him and it was a hit. Hugo Enselin then put it in his book, Recipes for Mixed Drinks. It was found in other books too. Harry McAlone's book, Harry Craddock's book, they all write about the Tipperary cocktail. Now, over the years, the build of this cocktail has changed. It's no longer an equal parts drink because Irish whiskey is a very smooth, soft whiskey. So we bump up the Irish whiskey, bring down the chartreuse. Also, the original drink did not have bitters. I'm gonna be putting bitters in here. And yes, I'm putting in Angostura bitters. Some people put in orange bitters. It's been brought to my attention that I use Angostura bitters in a lot of my drinks, but I'm not the only one to add Angostura bitters to this cocktail. Now the booze. For this cocktail, we're gonna need Irish whiskey, sweet vermouth, green chartreuse, and Angostura bitters. In terms of the Irish whiskey, I'm using Redbreast 12 year because I like it. And I'm gonna be doing a full two ounces in this drink. So pick one that you enjoy and it's gonna be a great drink. In terms of the sweet vermouth, I'm going with a lighter sweet vermouth. If you want, you can use a heavier sweet vermouth. Nothing wrong with that, but you may find that you need to taper it back a little bit. Same goes with chartreuse. In fact, even more so, chartreuse can be a monster in a drink. I'm using just a very small amount. Green chartreuse, because that was what the original recipe called for. I'm doing a little lemon zest on top. So if you have a lemon handy, go get it right now. As always, you can find these bottles in my collection at Curiata. Check them out. Let's build. All spirits, so we're gonna stir this cocktail. We're gonna start with the Irish whiskey. Two ounces of Irish whiskey. I don't think I mentioned that this cocktail is served up. So if you want a chilled glass, get your glassware chilling. To that, we'll do half an ounce of sweet vermouth, quarter of an ounce of green chartreuse, and two dashes of Angostura bitters. Now we can add ice and stir. 30 seconds or so. Oh, it's pretty good. Grab your chilled glassware, strain off the cocktail right into the glass, and then one swath of lemon. We're gonna express the oils right across the top. Hit the sides, discard this. You could put that on there as a garnish, but that just gets in the way sometimes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tipperary cocktail. Cheers. Oz, would you like to join me? Sure thing. Ladies first. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. <laughs> Anders is laughing at me. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, you know what, sometimes you taste something and you have to take a minute to process what it is you're experiencing. So it's kind of herbal mm -hmm. a little, and it's almost, in my opinion, it's sweet, but also a little savory. I really like it. The chartreuse comes in at the end and it isn't right up in your face. Mm -hmm. The whiskey's there, but it's not a spicy whiskey like you'd get with rye. It really isn't overpowering at all. I think it's really nice and balanced. It's really tasty, actually. It's kind of like a complicated Manhattan. It is, but it, it's hard to put my finger on. Bitters and chartreuse together. Together, they make kind of this medicinal mm. 
mm. compound. Medicinal. So this is like a medicinal Manhattan. Yes, that's it. I now, don't... people can try this uh, in the original ratios, right? If they wanted to. You sure could. If you are a big chartreuse fan, mm. then I would recommend trying the equal parts. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Get out of here. Bye-bye. Get out of here. What else? What else?